Fellas. A major reason I started making videos on old school was to share some information with people who are just getting into the game and trying to progress their accounts. So today, I want to continue my account progression help series of videos and give you 10 more goals that will help you escape the mid game and essentially put you into the late game. Hopefully, if you complete these, you'll no longer worry about unlocks and focus more on just getting XP, bossing, or having fun. So, let's get started. First, let's quickly get the No Leather Classic out of the way. Get a quest cape. Completing every quest in the game unlocks so much content. Unlocking Priftinus, Darkmire, TOA, TOB, and a bunch of other content is great for your account. In this video, I'm also going to suggest you complete all the mini quests, but I've talked about quests so much on this channel, so let's quickly jump into number two. Number two is the hard tier of the Achievement Diary. The medium diaries give you a lot of great benefits, but completing the hard tier really pushes those benefits to the next level. The hard tier of the Ardoin Diary now gives you a 10% increased chance of pickpocketing, which is very helpful when you go for 99. The Desert Diary will now let you use Zahir to make unfinished potions, as well as making the ropes you place at the Calphite Queen Lair and Tunnel permanent. The Falador Diary gives you access to the Crafting Guild Bank, which is one of the best banks in the game. It makes the giant mole drop noted mole skins and claws, as well as giving you a locator for the mole. Doing this boss without this is horrible. The Fremenic Diary now lets you use Tan Leather. The Kandoran Diary now lets you set your Camelot Teleport to Seer's Village, which is great for banking, as well as agility training. And on top of that, the Diary now gives you 15% more Marks of Grace at Seer's Roof, and also gives you a 10% increased chance to activate the special effect of Enchanted Bolts. This does stack with the ACB spec, and this is huge for anywhere you use Ruby, Diamond, or even Sapphire Bolts. The Karamja Diary gives you access to the underground portion of the gem mine, which is a great training and money making method, as well as being one of the closest teleports to a deposit box. The Cabos Diary gives you access to the Ash Sanctifier and an additional 2% chance to catch two fish at once. The Lumbridge and Drainer Diary gives you 10% increased experience from Tears of Gothics. This is great for free runecraft experience. It also gives you an unlimited amount of teleports to Falador Farm for your herb run. It's just very nice. The Mauritania Diary gives you 26 free buckets of slime and bone meal every day, which is great for prayer XP and ecto tokens. And you'll need these ecto tokens for the bone crusher, which is also a reward from this diary. But probably the most important one from this diary is the 50% extra runes from Barrow's chest. This will increase your profit per hour significantly. The Varrock diary isn't great at the heart tier, but you can now buy a few more battle staffs from Zaf, giving you some free GP every day. The Western Provinces lets you upgrade your void to Elite Void, giving it a plus three prayer bonus and 2.5% additional damage to range and magic. With this diary, you'll also get access to the private Red Chinchampa hunting ground, which is great for dodging bots and will help you find a free world much easier. You're now also able to make a Crystal Halberd, which is a great spec weapon for a lot of PVM activities. And finally, the Wilderness Diary will now let you get up to five ecumenical keys at a time, which is great for God Wars. And it also gives you the ability to choose your destination when using the Wilderness Obelisks. This is great for getting around out there, making it much faster when you're doing bosses or doing clues. And I know that probably felt like a lot, but those are just some of the benefits. I didn't even list all of them. Do your diaries. They are extremely beneficial. And when we talk benefits, we need to talk gear because upgrading your gear is the biggest benefit you can get on any account. For this video, I really just want to talk about the crystal armor and the Bofa. This might be one of the biggest gear upgrades you can make on any account that isn't a twisted bow or shadow. This set is going to be so integral to how you boss until you have that busted ass Tebow. This set really bridges the gap into PVM in a way that no other gear or weapon really does. These items make your time at Zolra, Muspa, TOA, Chambers of Zarek, and many other activities much better by really ramping up your DPS. 
I also think that now is probably a good time to state that these videos are not the end all be all. Everything I say is always a suggestion. Every piece of content in the game is doable with almost any gear setup, but the level of difficulty really ramps up when you're doing end game PVM in rags. Missouri Tebow is obviously better, but 160 mil in range gear is much more obtainable for most people compared to the 1.6 billion GP you'll need for the other one. And this is especially important at this stage of your account progression. And to continue progressing your account, I think the next thing you should do is unlock your final skilling methods. These will likely be different for everyone, as your ideal training method to 99 might be different from what I list here, because you might prefer something more AFK, or maybe even something that's way more involved, like tick manipulation. But these are just my suggestions. Combat will always be combat. You don't really need to unlock anything here. Just keep doing Slayer and you'll have access to all the monsters you want to kill. This includes ranged and all your melees. Magic might be a little different because you might want to push it up so you can unlock Ice Barrage or Blood Barrage. Something like level 86 for Plank Make will be your unlock. Rune crafting is much simpler. Unlocking Blood Runes at 77 gives you access to an AFK method on Zaya, as well as an active method with the True Blood Altar for both GP and XP. Training construction will be different for everyone. I personally did Oak Dungeon Doors to 99 and would really recommend you do this so that you can save money and still get some crazy XP. For agility, you have two major unlocks. I want you to unlock the Arty Roofs at 90 or the fifth floor of the Sepulchre at 92. Pushing your agility level up is very important for run energy restoration. And I know it might be a slog, but you'll want to get it done eventually. And with that, when I tell you to get these requirements, I really recommend you don't do each one in one go. Kind of push all your skills up together till you get them to a point that you want them to be at. All skilling is, is a big grind. If you don't do it at your own pace and try to rush stuff, you are going to burn out, so I really recommend you try to avoid that at all costs. For Herb Lore, you can unlock Sarah Bruce at 81, but this method is incredibly expensive, so something like Ranging Potions at 72 might be more ideal. For thieving, I'm guessing you probably want to do Arty Nice to 99, so getting 95 to never fail is really nice, but for now, I'm going to recommend you're aiming for 91 so you can do all the rooms in Pyramid Plunder. For crafting, I recommend level 87 for doing empty light orbs. For fletching, you'll want magic longbows at 85. Hunter is made substantially better and more GP at level 80 when you get 5 box traps. Mining is weird because there are plenty of options, but I do recommend you get 92 for amethyst so that you do have that big GP and AFK option. Smithing, I don't really think has a requirement. You can do your best training method when you can make gold bars at the blast furnace, so this one just gets an LOL. Fishing can be done in a lot of ways. I'd say you're sitting pretty when you can catch sharks, but more specifically through minnows at 82 fishing. And the same goes for cooking. Cooking sharks is great and profitable, so you'll want at least 80 cooking for now. You'll want 90 fire making for redwood logs, 90 wood cutting for cutting those redwood logs, and for farming, you'll probably just want access to tier three of the farming guild so you can plant as many fruit trees as possible at 85 farming. The only skill I didn't cover was prayer, because that leads me into number 4. Unlocking rigor and augury at level 77 prayer is so important. These two prayers are very similar to piety in the sense that they are a massive buff to all PVM. Rigor is especially important just because of how many bosses have you ranging them. Rigor increases your range attack by 20%, damage by 23%, and even your defense by 25%. This prayer is incredibly busted but does cost a pretty penny. Unlike Piety, you don't just unlock it. You'll have to buy a scroll to unlock it or complete Chambers of Zarek over and over again until you get it as a drop. Right now, the Dexterous Prayer Scroll costs about 31 mil, but this investment will pay dividends in the long run. On the other hand, Augury might not get used as much, but it does still have its perks, offering you 25% buff to your magic attack and magic defense, as well as just a general 25% buff to your defense. You probably won't use Augury as much as you use Rigor, especially at this point in your account progression, but it currently costs just under 3 mil, and will offer you way more than that in benefits. And while your PVM is being buffed by prayers, let's talk about some POH upgrades that will make your time across the game way better. I made a whole video about why construction is so good, but I'll give you a TLDR in this video. Upgrading your POH lets you get 
everything you need to successfully PVM, as well as skill and do clues and keeps it all in one place. So let's look at upgrading your POH to the bare minimum for quality of life. The nice thing about construction is that you can boost plus eight and you can do this with a spicy stew giving you a visible plus five and the crystal saw adding plus three on top of that. So every level I tell you here, technically you can minus eight from to get the actual requirement outside of the fairy ring. To make your POH really worthwhile, I think you need seven things. At level 72, you can get the portal nexus chamber. In this room, you can build a basic portal nexus as well as mounting a Xerix amulet and a dig site pendant. This room is now your transportation hub. At level 80, you can build a dark altar. This will let you switch between ancient magic and the standard spellbook without having to run through the pyramid. At 81, you can get a basic jewelry box, which gives you unlimited rings of dueling and games necklaces. This is great for getting to Ferex, Castle Wars, Berthope, or even Barbarian Assault so that you can just run to Otto's Grotto for fishing. At 85, you can get a fancy rejuvenation pool. This pool will restore your special attack, run energy, prayer points, and fix any reduced stats, excluding hit points. Ideally, you want to go for the Ornate Pool at level 90, but that can be a steep requirement just based on how much GP it costs to get to. But also at level 85, you can build a fairy ring in your POH. This is the fastest teleport to a fairy ring in the game and will save you a lot of time long term. When I made my construction video, there were a few comments asking if it was worth to build all this yourself or if it was viable to just use someone else's house on World 330. While you can do that, it's really just personal preference. I know that if I'm actively playing the game, I am going to my POH constantly. If I had to always hop worlds and find a house, the amount of kills or the amount of items I would get from skilling would dramatically decrease, making me less GP or even getting me less XP per hour. Having your own POH that you can directly teleport to is huge and I highly recommend it. And with having your house set up for PVM, the next thing I want to talk about is the combat achievements. With the recent update making it a point-based system, the medium tier of the combat achievements is more achievable than ever. Completing the medium tier is great for some nice quality of life perks. Your cannon can now hold an additional five cannonballs, making AFK Slayer just slightly more AFK. You'll gain two additional points per game of pest control, making the grind for Elite Void even quicker. When getting a Slayer task, your boss task can now be as big as 45 kills. You'll have a 5% increased chance to get both easy and medium clues. You'll get five free teleports to the God Wars dungeon entrance, which is very nice. And probably the most important is that if you equip Gaumel's Hilt 2, the prayer drain effect at Barrows will be completely nullified. This will save you a ton on prayer potions, and it will make your Barrows trip technically more profitable and overall just a little bit more chill. For number eight on this list, let's talk about getting your first 99. By this point in your account, you might actually already have one, but if you don't, now is a great time to get your first skill cape. Skill capes in general aren't inherently that important. There are some that have a few nice teleports, but mostly they can be replaced with other items. The point of getting a 99 is in the air. Is it for a personal accomplishment? Is it technically account progression? Who knows? In my opinion, it's all of the above. Everybody plays the game for a different reason, and you can really do whatever you want, but if you are eventually planning on max Doing that grind for a 99 at this point of your account, especially if you decide to do a fast one, will really tell you if this is something you actually want to do. My recommendation is that you actually do go for a fast one or an easy one. Cooking, fletching, fire making at Winter Todd, or even thieving are really great options. All of the above should make you a little bit of money for once you're done, and it will really show if you do like skilling like you think you do. The second last thing on this list is getting untradeables. There are a few untradeables that I really recommend. The Dragon Defender is a must, Ava's Device, which you should honestly have had way before now, a Slayer Helmet, an Imbued God Cape for Major Arena 2, Arclight, the Fighter Torso if you can stomach World 306 Barbarian Assault, and arguably the most important, Elite Void. Elite Void is pretty damn good and can substitute your need for a few gear sets in a lot of situations if you can't afford them yet. If you've never done an activity like the Theater of Blood, you might be surprised to hear that Elite Void is probably the first set of gear you'll use here. It works just well enough and is great for learning. You'll probably be using this gear set here until you get comfortable with bringing less food and more switches. And speaking of Theater of Blood, 
The last thing on this list is to try raiding in other endgame PVM. This game has so much to offer, from skilling, minigames, bosses, and even raids. Everyone is very likely to have a different thing they prefer doing in-game, but I'm going to tell you that you're severely missing out if you don't at least try everything. There is no guarantee that you will love raiding or endgame PVM like Small Group Next or Fasani's Nightmare, but you'll never know if it's something you enjoy if you never try it. Raiding is by far the best ways to make large amounts of money. It is possible, but very unlikely that you will ever see the amount of GP required to buy a Twisted Bow or a Shadow if you're not raiding. Billions of GP does not come from making 1 mil an hour for thousands of hours. It mainly comes from gambling your life away for a purple chest. And that's my list on 10 goals for escaping the mid game. There are some other things you can do after this, but I don't really know if there's enough to make a video like this. But who knows? Maybe one more down the line. Thank you to my YouTube channel members, Dino and Snacks. If you watched this whole video and thought something like, damn, I'm nowhere near doing any of this. No worries. I've linked my account progression help videos on screen now, and I also ordered the playlist so you can start from a new player's perspective. But I've got nothing left to say, so I'll see you in the next one.